Hey you guys, it's Halo Doggo here, and today I wanted to talk about Call of Duty World at War and Call of Duty World War II's multiplayer. So earlier I talked about the zombies and the campaign, but I thought that I should probably make multiplayer its own video because of how much there is to multiplayer compared to the campaign and zombies. So let's just start off with supply drops. So, there's no supply drops in World of War, you know, those things that need to be completely eradicated from video games in total, just loot boxes in total. No one likes them, unless if they're cosmetic only, and then again, people still don't like them. Just listen to your fans, listen to the fan base. They do not like loot boxes. You know, maybe Overwatch players do because, you know, I don't know. But Call of Duty players, they're getting sick of it. Halo players, and especially me, I don't like them at all. They're probably going to be in Halo 6, but, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, Star Wars Battlefront 2, you know, if Call of Duty Black Ops 4 or the next Call of Duty does something like that, you know, they're, ugh, it's going to be a big mess. But as for Call of Duty World War II's multiplayer, besides the supply drops, personally, it got really stale. I, you know, it got really stale, got really boring, unsatisfying. I know that I said boring and satisfying in my previous video, but I, I just really thought that it wasn't that fun, you know, it's kind of just the same thing every year to me. You know, you just run up to someone, you kill them, you get a kill streak, you send down your kill streak, rinse and repeat. And then once the match is over, you go into another one, into one of the other game modes like uh, Capture the Flag, Team Deathmatch, Hardpoint, War, Team Deathmatch, Team Deathmatch, Team Deathmatch, Kill Confirmed, Team Deathmatch. You know, really, <clears throat> in previous Call of Duties, you can really only find matches in Team Deathmatch. I don't know why no one ever plays any of the other game modes, but Team Deathmatch is really the only game mode that you can play in games like World at War, sadly. In World at War, there's two things wrong with its multiplayer, but there's a whole bunch of things that it did right. So the first thing that it did wrong is, you know... It's, it's an old game, so not a lot of people play it anymore, and all that you can really find on there is Team Deathmatch, uh, whether it be hardcore Team Deathmatch or just normal Team Deathmatch, you know. You can find a match in Domination and Free For All, but Domination, it's pretty rare, and Free For All, that it's only one person per fire team or whatever, it's not that bad, you know, you can still find a match there, but... You know, it's gonna take a little while. As for Call of Duty World War II, however, it's the newest Call of Duty game, so you can find a match in literally any playlist. Um, but the game is just not as fun as World at War is. So the second thing that World at War did wrong for multiplayer is it has hackers and modders now. So, you know... The gameplay that you're seeing is probably not, you know, with modded hackers and everything. You know, it's just a normal gameplay of World at War and everything. And, um, you know, it, sometimes it can be kind of rare to find modders and hackers because we're on to next gen, which is Xbox One. But the people who still play Xbox 360, you know, with modded Xbox 360s, they're able to mod the game and break it basically you know they can add in really whatever they want to it's almost like you're on the pc for call of duty world world war ii right now you know and it's kind of game breaking and it's and it's kind of sad for it to happen to such a great game like world at war but you know things change so anyways for weapon balancing and classes hmm so, Call of Duty World War II. 
where should we start with classes? So it added in something new called divisions. You know, when they first talked about divisions and everything, I was like, wow, this sounds really cool. You know, it's something new for the Call of Duty franchise, you know. I was really hyped for divisions. I thought that it was going to be a great idea. And then when it released, uh, I don't think I've ever even seen someone use the armored class. It, who uses armored? And then also there's... Another class called, uh, I, I don't even know. It, it's called the Resistance class. It's the newest one, you know. It's pretty cool because it has, like, a Modern Warfare 2 thing in it. So everyone's like, oh, well, that's cool. But, you know, it, it's the newest one. And I don't really like it that much. Except for the fact that you get, like, a tactical pistol. Um, or, well, not a tactical pistol. You get a tactical knife with your pistol, so... You know, meleeing is a lot faster and everything, and I thought that, that was pretty cool. But other than the other than like two or three divisions, like the other half of them are just almost pointless to an extent. You know, airborne is good for war matches because uh, war mode is you know usually very long but linear maps. So, anyways, talking about linear maps. Call of Duty World War II, I think that you set a new record, because eight out of the nine standard maps are three-laned linear maps, besides Gustav Cannon, which I kind of like to an extent, you know, it's not the best map, but it's better than just running down three lanes, you know, um, so, you know, Gustav Cannon, it's a big open map, and I highly recommend either the Mountain Division or the Airborne Division, so you can move around quick, or, you know, you can snipe people with the Mountain Division, but, um, other than Gustav Cannon, most of the other maps, you just run around with a shotgun and just shoot people with your fire incinerary shells, which happens almost every single game. I die at least one time by a shotgun incinerary user. Rip me. But, you know, I just... <sighs> Three-laned maps in general. You know, you gotta be more artistic. But, um, yeah, you know, the maps, they look beautiful. You know, I'm not gonna lie about that. They did a great job with designing some of the maps... You know, like Gustav Cannon. Gustav Cannon, you know, it has that big old cannon in the middle. I thought that was a really great idea, but a lot of people hate the map. And I kind of do to an extent, but, you know, just because a map looks great, it doesn't mean that it's going to play great. And uh, also another saying is quality over quantity. That's what they tried to do here, because that there's only nine starting maps for Call of Duty World War II. That's not a lot compared to previous Call of Duties. I think that Black Ops 2 had the most, and that was like 17, maybe? I, I don't know for sure, but if you count Nuketown, I think that it was 17. You guys can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong about what Call of Duty how, has how many maps in it. Um, but I think the Black Ops 2 is the one where there was 17. Correct me if I'm wrong, though. And Call of Duty World War 2, it only has 9. So it went down by 8 maps than Black Ops 2. You know, that's a lot of maps missing. And they tried to go with that quality over quantity thing. But we don't have quality nor quantity here because basically all the maps are just three laned except for Gustav Cannon and then the resistance update because I have the season pass I got to play it and you know the maps on there are pretty good and especially the remake of the Modern Warfare 3 map I believe it's either Modern Warfare 2 or 3 but they remade a map from one of those two games, and I like it. It plays out almost identical to the original one, but um, the one map, uh, Hitler's Lair, or whatever it's called, you know, it was called, oh, the Wolf's Lair, 
It was called Hitler's Lair back in the beta stages, but uh, the Wolf's Lair, that map, I think that it's one of the advanced warfare maps, so they remastered one of their own maps anyways. The, that map was called Detroit, and, you know, they remastered that map. So basically, you're getting two remastered maps and one new map if you don't count the war map. And I already made an entire video on war and why I don't like that. So I'm not even going to get into war. But, um, you know, Call of Duty World War II's multiplayer, it has a lot of problems with its map design. Uh, my headquarters is still broken. I still can't get those air raid things. Um, there's just a lot of problems with it, and hopefully they're fixed, but now that Michael Condry is out of the picture, which is the creator of the game, basically, and one other one, I don't know his name, but Michael Condry and that other person, they were like the main founders of the game, and now that they're gone, I don't know what type of state the game is going to go into. It could, you know, the new people can make it better, they can make it worse, but I don't know. We'll just have to see how it goes, and hopefully World War II can get better over time. But right now, World at War is still a great game, even though you can only play Team Deathmatch for multiplayer. But personally, I love its multi- or not multiplayer. I love its campaign and zombies a lot. It, it has great campaign and zombies. And its campaign is also co-op. I forgot to mention that. But its campaign is co-op, so you can play with two people split screen and on Xbox Live. So that is really cool, and I think that should be something that should be in every Call of Duty game. But um, it was in Black Ops 3, and I really loved playing with my friends through the campaign, you know. And there was like this one glitch where when you went down, there was like a big rectangle over your body. I don't know why that happened, but it was just hilarious, you know. Co-op campaign is great, and then zombies, you know, you can't go wrong with zombies, even though there should be a bit of variety, like Extinction. Extinction was great, but, you know, it was only in Ghosts. Um, so anyways, in conclusion, World at War is definitely better than World War II, and I know that I didn't really say much about World at War, I, like, kind of leaned over to World War II a lot, but I wanted to say what I had to say about World at War and World War II. And basically, World at War is just a better game. Like in multiplayer, you can drive tanks on one map. You can, uh... You know, and there's a whole lot more map variety as well. And there's also only three bonus map packs, but they give you a whole bunch of maps and a new zombie map every single time. So overall, World at War is definitely better than Call of Duty World War II. And I'm going to be ending the video right here. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. I'll see you guys tomorrow in the next video. Tomorrow is going to be my Bioshock video. Be sure to check it out. And I will see you guys in the next video.